Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jai Prabhupada Krishna Prabhupada Ki Jai Thank you Anapurna it's going through a big, big bag of equipment, and it seems that I left something. And seems I left something in Potomac. Okay, but we will make it anyway. How do you, Krishna? Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Shamini Tinamane Namaste Sharashwati Devi Gauravani Pachari Nene Rise Sasanyavadi Pashchacha Dasatarani Vlad Maharaj Ki Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Hare Krishna Okay, where do we leave off, Tanya? Only you know. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj. Uh, we should start with uh, 71045. 71045. I just have to close some applications that slow me down. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. You want to know all my excuses for being late, or we'll We'll just forget those, right? <laughs> I was going to try to be early. I didn't realize that I had so many things with me that I had to set up. What is this? 71045. Simad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Prahlad, the best among exalted devotees. Dharma Bhagavatanam Cha Bhagavan Jena Gamyate Akyanismin Samanhatam Adyatmikam Aseshrataha. Principles of religion by which one can actually understand the Supreme Personality of God are called Bhagavad Dharma. In this narration, therefore, which deals with these principles, actual transcendence is properly described. Hmm. Purport. Through the principles of religion, one can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Brahman, the impersonal feature of the Supreme Lord, and Paramatma, the localized aspect of the Lord. When one is well conversant with all these principles, he becomes a devotee and performs Bhagavad Dharma. Prahlad Maharaj, the spiritual master in the line of the Siplic succession, advised that this Bhagavad Dharma be instructed to students from the very beginning of their education, Komara, Komara, Acharat Pragyo Dharman, Bhagavatam Iha, Sunima Bhagavatam 761. To understand the science of the Supreme Personality of God, it is the real purpose of education. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu 7523. One must simply hear about and describe Lord Vishnu and his various incarnations. 
This narration concerning Prahlad Maharaj and Lord Nusinghadev, therefore, has properly described spiritual transcendental topics. So we have, you know, often discussed the benefit of this Leela. We learned so much about pure bhakti from Prahlad Maharaj, didn't we? And we learned so much about who not to be from Hiranyakashipu. And as we said, one of, one of the easiest ways and best ways to learn pure bhakti is to study the pure bhakta because it's not theoretical, just like um, we study Prabhupada's activities because when you read Shastra about how you should act and the behavior of a pure devotee, sometimes we can make assumptions about what that looks like. And sometimes we can try to imitate that behavior and do it in the wrong way. Like, like sometimes you may think being very strict and hard and heavy with someone is the way you should be because devotees are strict and devotees are serious. And there are also, of course, times and places where, where we must be strict and serious, but it can be overdone. But when we see Prabhupada had many facets to his personality and according to various situations would deal with people differently, then we better understand how how to apply something which we thought was only, you could only apply it, in, often we think you can only apply it in one way because it's just the, like the first way that comes to your mind. Well, the devotee should be serious, he should be strict, he should be intolerant with non-devotees, et cetera, et cetera. And then so you get this picture in your mind of what it looks like. And then you hear stories, I'm gonna tell you a story now about Prabhupada and it expands. So there was a man had an engagement and he, he um, Prabhupada went to a convent, I believe. And it was a Catholic school and Prabhupada was speaking to the children and someone, this is very strange, had come with Prabhupada, maybe an Indian gentleman had come with Prabhupada. And then when he saw what he was doing, this Indian man thought, look, why are you going to a school? They have their own religion. So he got really upset with Prabhupada. What are you doing? Why, did you, why are you coming here? Why are you disturbing them? And Prabhupada, you know, devotees obviously wanted to stop him. Prabhupada just let him talk and he Prabhupada didn't say anything. And then after he, the man stopped talking, he turned to the, either right after or at some point, he turned to the devotees and said, I must have offended that man in my last life. And that's why he's upset with me. And then the next day or that week, Prabhupada asked if we can go to the house, that man's house. He said, I want to go there and bless him. Like bless your enemy. That's an amazing story, isn't it? Did any, have any of you ever heard that story before? Tanya knows everything. One time Prabhupada said, um, Fodi said, what does it mean that the devotee knows everything? And Prabhupada said, he should know everything his spiritual master knows. So, but there are many stories like this in which Prabhupada acted in a way in which you wouldn't have expected. And there are many stories in which he acted in the opposite way, maybe a way that you would expect somebody's um, or, or, or many times, but just you, you wouldn't know how he would act. But however he acted, it's a lesson for us. Oh, and then you try to understand, oh, this is the situation. This is the context. What was the nature of the person? What did the person need? What was the emotion um, Prabhupada was experiencing? Or even what was it that Prabhupada was trying to teach us? And then, so, okay, now I understand this verse, or I understand this principle, because now I see it in action. In the Shastra, it says, Ajata, about Yudhisthira Maharaj, it said, Ajata Shatru. Ajata means unborn, Shatru means enemy. His enemy was never born, and you might think, well, Duryodhan didn't like him. 
but it means that he doesn't do anything which would cause enmity. It doesn't mean that people wouldn't have enmity towards him. But by his actions, he wouldn't cause enmity, and by his actions, he would always try to neutralize enmity. So one would think, okay, this means he has no, he has no enemy. Yudhisthira Marsh had enemies, but he was no one's enemy, and he didn't do anything to cause them to be enemies. That was their own, that was their own uh, contamination. So that was so we we get an example of that verse in his life, and so we we better understand it through the light through his life, right? Now we've we've heard about faith, we've heard about fearlessness. Then we get that example from Prahlad Maharaj. He had, well, how could he be fearless? He had so much faith in Krishna's protection. He and and also what we could see with Prahlad Maharaj, the the kind of protection he he felt was not just that Krishna would protect me, but we we also understand from Shastra that Krishna, whatever he does, is what he wants to do with me, so I'm under his protection because he did what, what he wanted to do with me, what he felt was best, although I didn't think it was the best thing. So then I lose my faith that Krishna is protecting me. But faith that Krishna is the protector is that, well, whatever he's doing is ultimately for my protection. Now, sometimes it takes 10 years before you realize it, when you look back and go, oh, now with 10 years hindsight and see, I see how my life has gone. If that didn't happen, I wouldn't have made a left turn here. I would have still been going right and probably uh, that wouldn't have been good. But you don't always understand it at the time. But so Prahlad Mars is fearless because for him, like whatever happens, if he dies or doesn't die, it's like, okay, that's what Krishna wants, he wants. So that's how he could be fearless. And that was based on his faith that Krishna protects him. But so it's nice to see that, right? Otherwise, we think, okay, Krishna protects us, but why, you know, why did this happen? Why did I bang my head on this door yesterday if Krishna's protecting me? Probably because you were tired and weren't paying attention, not because Krishna is not protecting you. And so, Krishna, why don't you protect me from my own stupidity? Well, that he'll let you do that even he can't protect you from doing something stupid, at least not always, neither. I mean, he could, but generally he doesn't. But, um, you know, so how we would define protection may be different than, than how the pure devotee defines or sees it or understands it. So that's why you need, that's why you need these activities that's so why you need to hear the Bhagavatam, because then, then you can kind of look into it and say, hey, what, what, how is it that you could have an elephant run over you and, and you were like, yeah, it's okay. No, you know, there's nowhere in that chapter where we see Prahlad Maharaj complaining, which is like, it's inconceivable, right? Because we just play, complain as soon as the weather gets one degree too hot or one degree too cold, we start complaining, right? Or the prasadam's a little spicy. And, Right, you know, we don't need much to complain about, do we? <laughs> Have you ever gone through a day without complaining? That's an interesting question. Um, um, and you start to think, probably complain. You know, you get out of bed, I'm so tired. And there was this funny, I, I told some of you years ago about this funny product. You wear this product and you, put it around your neck, and every time you complain, it shocks you. So it's really, really funny, because it made him realize how much he was complaining, because he didn't realize. So, you know, he, he got the product, he put it on. His wife had made some coffee for me, taste the coffee, oh, it's cold. <laughs> then he goes out of, outside of his house, and he goes, so hot today. <laughs> He gets in the car, oh, there's so much traffic. So just to make us realize how much we complain. And then the funniest part was the end. I wish I knew the name of the video. I, I don't, I, it was years ago that I saw it. But at the end, he doesn't like the product because it's always shocking him. So he's calling in to return it. He goes, I don't like this product. It's always shocking me. 
So it's just, it's just so funny because we probably complain tens and uh, uh, well, we complain multiple times a day. We don't even realize it because it's it's so normal. And then you have this story with Prahlad Maharaj, who actually has something to complain about. And what does he say? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. That's all he says. No complaining. And if you really get bad at complaining, then like if you're really wealthy, then you'll you'll go to an expensive store to buy an expensive purse. You know, I don't know what an expensive purse costs, but maybe like three thousand or five thousand you could probably spend, yes. On some, you know, Italian. Shotir Mai, could you spend five thousand on a purse in Italy? Is that possible? More. More. I'm in the wrong business. Okay, let's support our movement with making purses. Right? <clears throat> so if you're in that category and you have your eyes set on a, a special purse, so they're probably rare purses, and you go to buy it and they're sold out, then that's what you complain about, right? Although with that purse, you could have fed like how many thousands of people? So complaining is interesting, isn't it? So if you, if you read the Bhagavatam and you study the character of devotees and, and try to compare that to your character, it, it, it'll start to make more sense. And then you'll understand why Krishna is in, engaging in these leelas that glorify his devotee through their actions. I mean, you know, if, if Prahlad wasn't put through all that suffering, his glory would be minimized. His glory is maximized by that, right? So his tolerance, his faith, and his compassion. It's hard to be compassionate in general. It's, it's very difficult to be compassionate to someone who tried to kill you, don't you think? You know, there was um, this really funny story, it's true. These young children were asked to write prayers to God. And one kid said, said, God, I don't know how you do it. You're compassionate to everyone. You know, it's, it's like a lot of times I have, or like you're kind to everyone. He says, I can hardly be kind to my brother like an hour a day. Like, I don't know how you do it. So being, not only being kind, but being compassionate to someone who tried to kill you, that's inconceivable. What an inspiration that is for us to develop, you know, like if you, if you have any doubt that the process of Krishna consciousness is meant to enable you to become a sadhu, a saintly person, and live by these qualities, then this story should alleviate that doubt. And that you understand these are transcendental pastimes, so Krishna could have taught all these things, but he didn't have to teach them. He just had to have Prahlad um, execute them, right? And by Prahlad executing them, it's even a better way of teaching them. Or sometimes it's said, Krishna teaches in Bhagavad Gita the principles and the philosophy, and then Bhagavatam is the enactment of it in the lives of devotees. And then Chaitanya Charjamrita is the act, enactment of Prema to the fullest extent. And, in, and I may have mentioned this before, but Prabhupada had said to a devotee who was complaining or was not being tolerant enough or patient enough, and Prabhupada said, he compared what that devotee was going to, to what Prahlad Maharaj went through. And so relatively speaking, what that devotee was going through was not that significant when compared to Prahlad Maharaj. Of course, that devotee felt it was significant, and that was Prabhupada's point, that you might feel it significant. But when you compare it to what Prahlad Maharaj went through, it's not. And therefore, that's an inspiration to be tolerant, because he's tolerating much more. And so sometimes it's like that, you know, you, that, you know, comparison can be very negative, but it can be very positive. And like, okay, Prahlad Maharaj tolerated this. What do I have to tolerate? Not very much. 
oh, go on Sankirtan, it's so difficult. I have to approach people. They don't want to be approached. I just feel like I'm bothering them. And it's a little, little austerity compared to sitting in an ice cold lake all night meditating or in front of a fire when it's like 50 degrees outside, Celsius. So, and, and Prabhupada um, often would say that, that the austerity in this age is not really difficult. We think it's difficult. Oh, it's so hard even to get my rounds done. It's so hard. Four principles, so hard. We may think that way from time to time, or we may think that way all the time. And Prabhupada's saying, so he does the comparison. Compared to Satya Yuga, 100,000 years of meditation, living on roots and fruits in the forest, sleeping under a tree, uh, you got it easy. You got a real deal here. How do you know you got a deal compared to what people had to pay in other ages? Then you know you have a deal. So that's the idea. Okay. Hare Krishna. So we'll go to the next verse. This is verse 46. Ya itat punya makyanam Vishnu viryo pabrnhitam Kirtayat shadadayat shutta Karma pashar pashar dimuchate Okay, now you're going to get a blessing. You ready for your blessing for attending all these classes? One who hears and chants this narration about the omnipotence of the Supreme Personality of God at Vishnu is certainly liberated from material bondage without fail. Okay, so then some of you are thinking, wait a minute, like when does the liberation come? I heard the story, Barbara, we just finished. Am I liberated from bondage? Uh, you're on the way. If you don't feel it now, it's coming soon. And you were definitely liberated while you were hearing it, weren't you? That's for sure. You had you were free from the modes of nature, at least while you were hearing it. I hope you were, but that's that's Prabhupada said, at least by hearing you're in the mode of goodness, at least liberated from passion and ignorance. So that that's the power. Um, of hearing and liberation doesn't necessarily mean you merge in Brahman or you go back to God. It, it's liberation from the effects of the modes of nature. That's another definition. So certainly we were liberated by hearing it. And certainly it will help us on the path of liberation. <clears throat> and for us, liberation simply means prema. So good job, everyone. Give yourself a big hand. You've now been liberated by hearing. That was easy, wasn't it? You just had to sit there and listen to my jokes for a few months and you got liberated. And in between, we read the Bhagavatam verses. So that was really easy. Okay. Text 47. Itadyarari purusasya margendali langa yatra yuta padhadam prayata pateta daitya majasya chasatam pravarasya punyang shrutvanu bhavam akuto bhayam eti lokam. Prahlad Maharaj was the best among exalted devotees. Anyone with great anyone who, with great attention, hears this narration concerning the activities of Prahlad Maharaj, the killing of Hiranyakashipu, and the activities of the Supreme Personality of God in Nishingadev, surely reaches the spiritual world where there is no anxiety. Your ticket has been purchased. Congratulate yourself, everyone. You just received your ticket back to Godhead. All I can say is keep that ticket in a safe place and keep it validated by continually hearing the Bhagavatam, chanting your rounds, following the principles. 
And your seat, if you don't, they're going to give away your seat to somebody else. So you have you have your place waiting in the spiritual world. You have your form, your spiritual form is waiting. Your activities, everything is there. It's waiting, but you don't want it to be given away to somebody else. But you can't they can't give away you form, but you may not. They may not even let you on the plane. You, you have a seat, but you may not get on the plane. That's a better analogy. So keep hearing and chanting to make sure you make it to the airport. You want to hear a beautiful story? Some of you may have heard this story. It might make you cry. So beautiful. Are you ready? Should I play some music to go? No. Background music? You want background music? I have to find some background music. Let's see if I have any. I don't know. Um, Uh, that was called minor details, like plug in your computer when the battery is low, those details. You know those minor details? Like, yeah. Called being two vata. We vatas are spaced out. Okay, I forgot to plug it in. I was kind of out of balance coming back, not having everything set up. So that was just another detail. Oh, anyway, I don't have the right music for this. I just, it's not, it's not like a sad story where you need sad music. It's a happy story. It's a happy story that needs sad and happy music. So I don't have it yet, but anyway. So, You know the story of Gopa Kumar. So this verse is telling us about how if we do this, we get our ticket back to Godhead. So Gopa Kumar took a long journey. He took the long route back to Godhead. He went through different planetary systems. And do you know when he went back to Godhead, he was wearing the same clothes that he had in the material world? Did you know that? You want inspiring guitar music. Okay, inspiring guitar music. Hold on. My, I don't know if, if I kept it. I, I think I had my sister's ex-boyfriend was a guitarist who played professionally. So 
I actually recorded him. And I think, um, I think I let it go. I think I, well, I have some other things. I don't know. I like these. I use these for my guided meditations. Kup Kumar makes it back to Godhead. Kup Kumar traveled through the material and spiritual worlds all the way up to Baikunta. But he was not satisfied. He dealt with Lord Narayan like a coward boy, just like a friend. And everyone in Vaikuntha said, you cannot do that. Because he was actually a coward boy. He couldn't stay in Vaikuntha. He finally made it to Braj in the spiritual world. He looked a little out of place and he asked someone, where's Krishna? And they looked at him like, you're crazy. And then a beautiful woman came and carried him by his hand. He said, see there in the distance, you see all that dust? That's Krishna coming with the cows. Let's go meet him. And he started running towards Krishna. And Krishna saw him. And Krishna started running towards him. And they ran. And they ran. Of course, it was slow motion for dramatic effect. And they embraced. And they both fainted. Then it was time to go home for dinner. And Krishna said to Gopkumar, come, come eat with us. And Radharani had cooked sweet sweets for Krishna. And Krishna took a bite of those sweets and he said, this is the worst sweet I've ever eaten. This is terrible. And then he took that sweet and he put it in the mouth of Gop Kumar. And Gop Kumar went into total ecstasy. He had never tasted a sweet in his life like that. And then Krishna looked at him and said, Gop Kumar, you're not dressed for the spiritual world. Krishna took off his turban. He put it on Gop Kumar. He took off his jewelry. He put it on Gop Kumar. He took off his cloth, some of not all, some of his cloth, dressed up Gop Kumar. This is your Krishna, your lover, your friend, your son, your master, depending on your rasa. This is your Krishna. And you've got a ticket to see that Krishna. And you keep that ticket valid by hearing about that Krishna. And if you hear about that Krishna more, more, and more, you will fall in love with that Krishna because he's so beautiful and so full of love and kindness and forgiveness and patience and beauty sweetness. All of that to be said for keeping your ticket validated. Hare Krishna. So, I'm going to read the Next verse, right? Yes. 
I just accidentally, oh yeah. What verse is the next one? I, I had to re-log on, so I, what verse are we on now? 48. Forty-eight. You know where that music came from? When I was in Hawaii, there was a friend of Gormani, and he had a studio. And it was like a five-minute walk or four-minute walk from her house. And we did some recording there. That that CD that we did, Govinda Jai Jai, that was just like spontaneous. I actually want to re-record it because he just goes, he just said, just sing it. Then I sang it, give him the idea. And he goes, great, we'll use that vocal. And I go, no, no, because it's fine. So then, um, but he did, he had done all this other music and I really liked it for guided meditations. So this is text 48. You young niloke, but the puri bhaga, bhaga. Lokam puna namunayo bhiyanti ye shangrihan avasatiti sakshad gudam param brahman manushalingam manushalingam appearing like a human being. Narada Muni continued, My dear Maharaj Yudhisthira, all of you, the Panda, Pandavas, not the Pandavas, that's if you're in Mexico, they're the Pandavas. If you're in India, they're the Pandavas. My dear Maharaj Yudhisthira, all of you, the Pandavas, are extremely fortunate. For the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna lives in your palace, just like a human being. Great saintly persons know this very well, and therefore, they constantly visit this house. You know, um, you know Mahar, um, you know that um, Yudhisthira Maharaj was very upset because he felt the battle was being fought on his account and so many people were killed on his account. I want to read you something about how he felt. This is from the first canto, 13th chapter, text 16. So after the settlement of all disturbing conditions, and reestablishment of the peaceful order of the state. This is after the battle. And after seeing their su the surviving child, Parikshit, well satisfied, because he'll, <clears throat> Parikshit will be the next ruler. Maharaj Yudhisthira felt some relief as a human being. <clears throat> In other words, on the human side, this is interesting. Uh, you know, he's a devotee, but you know, this, the human side, that feeling grief, the feeling of depression, the feeling of guilt that, that we human beings feel, the human side, that he was feeling also, even though a pure devotee, he had those feelings. Isn't that interesting? Don't you find that interesting? Prabhupada says he felt some relief as a human being. Although he had very little attraction for material happiness, which is always illusory and temporary. So even though he wasn't attracted as a compassionate devotee, he was feeling, and a humble devotee, he was feeling on my account, there was this war. So he was feeling, he, he, he felt relief when everything was settled and the world was now in a better place. Hare Krishna, thought that was interesting. Don't you think that's interesting? So that was in response um, to the Pandavas and Yudhisthira in this verse. And even though Krishna was there, there was some, some regret, some sadness was there. So okay. we weren't reading the purports before. The reason I was rushing to get everything finished by Nisimha Chaturdasi, but it's way past. So we're kind of cruising now. After hearing about the activities of Prahlad Maharaj, a pure devotee should be very anxious to follow in his footsteps. But such a devotee might be disappointed, thinking that not every devotee can come to the standard of Prahlad Maharaj. We've talked about that, right? How can I be like Prahlad Maharaj? Just, I'm just becoming more and more depressed every day I hear these classes because it, 
makes me realize that I'll never be like Prahlad Mars. What's the use of going on? I'll never be a pure devotee. It's, uh, I'm trying so hard. I'm still, I'm still a rascal, number one. You know that feeling, right? Maybe I should write a song. We'll call it Rascal Number One. Did you ever feel like rascal number one? 16 rounds for years and years, still I feel like rascal number one. Yeah. You ever have, you ever have that feeling? Yeah. Yes, Prabhu, I have that feeling 24-7 since I first day I started chanting Hare Krishna. Anyway, it's also a transcendental feeling. It's not entirely material. But it's, it's interesting that Prabhupada brings it up here. This is the nature of a pure devotee. He always thinks himself to be the lowest, to be incompetent and unqualified. I don't know if you remember, but it was maybe a year ago when I was giving class, I gave everybody a warning. We were talking about feeling like low and unqualified. And I said, well, I hate to break the bad news, but you're going to feel that way like eternally. So get used to it. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> Get used to it, Prabhu. You're going to feel that way forever. Because no matter how Krishna conscious you will become, you will always feel, I'm rascal number one. Hey, that rhymes. That's a line for the song. No matter how Krishna conscious you will become, you will always feel you are rascal number one. So that feeling will not go away. You were thinking when you make advancement, you won't feel like rascal number one. You'll feel more like rascal number one, the more advanced you become. Sorry for the bad news. <clears throat> Not much to look forward to, is there? Just more. But this, this depression will be transcendentally ecstatic, so don't worry. It will be blissful. It will not be materially miserable. Thus, after hearing the narration of Prahlad Maharaj's activities, Maharaj Yudhisthira, who was on the same standard of devotional service as Prahlad, might have been thinking of his own humble position. So let me go back to the verse, because I was assuming it was because he was sorry for the battle. Mm. Well, actually, it doesn't, the verse didn't say anything about that. So Prabhupada saying, Yudhisthira Maharaj, um, after hearing from Narada Muni about Prahlad Maharaj, might have thought, wow, he's like, so fortunate, so advanced, and uh, I'm not. And Prabhupada's making the point, Maharaj Yudhisthira is on the same level as Prahlad Maharaj. One could argue on a higher level. He was friends, a friendly relationship. I guess it's debatable, but it, Prabhupada says equal, so at least equal. So he might have been thinking of his own humble position. Narada Muni, however, could understand Maharaj's, Maharaj Yudhisthira's mind, and therefore he immediately encouraged him by saying that the Pandavas were not less fortunate. They were as good as Prahlad Maharaj, because although Lord Nishingadev appeared for Prahlad, the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his original form as Krishna was always living with Pandavas. Okay, this is really interesting. Krishna is living with you, and you're still lamenting that another devotee is more fortunate than you. Wow, everybody on the count of three say, wow. One, two, three. Wow. Okay, let's, let's set that for the record, ladies and gentlemen. Even if you're living with Krishna and you hear the activities of a pure devotee, because of your humility, you will think he's more fortunate than I am and you're living with Krishna. That's amazing, isn't it? I guess, you know, we were saying, wow, and one devotee said, we shouldn't say, wow, we should say, Ascharyavat. Ascharyavat means amazing. It's from the second chapter of the Gita. The soul is amazing. Say, Ascharyavat. Don't say, wow. Prabhu, that is Ascharyavat. In England, they say, brilliant. That is brilliant. Even if you, if you come up with a brilliant statement, they will say that is brilliant. Good idea, that is brilliant. We in America will say that is awesome, which in old English means it's really bad. No, 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 we could say 
Do you want to play a joke on somebody? If they say something, tell them that is awful because awful actually means awesome. It's just, it's usage has changed. Awful now means bad, but etymologically it means full of awe. Prabhu, you are so full of awe. You're the awfulest person I've ever met. Say it that way so they won't take it in the wrong way. You are totally full of awe. You are awe-full. You are chit-full, ananda-full, and sat-full. Sat, chit, ananda, chid-maya, chid-maya, full of chit. Ananda-maya, full of ananda. And awe-maya, full of awe. Full of ascharyavat. Yeah, Ascharyavat means full of Ascharya, full of amazing. You are Ascharyavat Maya, full of amazing. You are amazing. Okay, whatever. I don't know Sanskrit. I asked Prabhupada if I should learn it, could learn it. He said, if you had time. Still haven't found time to learn it. Probably wasn't a priority on my, and it probably, you know, if it came easier to me, I probably would have learned it by now. But if something's difficult, I generally don't have, the, I think I don't have the time for it. Okay, let's continue to read. Hmm. So Krishna was living with the Pandavas, but Yudhisthira was lamenting. That is very interesting and very helpful, right? Because you're lamenting that you're far away from Krishna. He's lamenting because he doesn't feel that he's good as Prahlad. And Krishna's there. Although the Pandavas, because of the influence of Krishna's yoga maya, could not think of their fortunate position, every saintly person, including the great sage Narada, could understand it. And therefore, they constantly visited Maharaj Yudhisthira. In the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, Kop Kumar, he, he goes to different devotees and he said, oh, I heard you were the best devotee. And he said, no, no, I'm not the best devotee. So each devotee would say, no, you should go see this one. And then they go to see that one. No, no, you should go see this one. And they go to see that one. No, no, you should go to... Everybody was pointing to someone better. That's the qualification of a devotee. If I say, Maharaj, you're the best devotee in ISKCON, then you'll say, no, no, this Maharaj is the best devotee. And then I go to him. Say, Maharaj said, you're the best devotee, Maharaj. No, no, this Maharaj is the best devotee. I go to that Maharaj. I go, no, this Grihasta is the best devotee. You go to him, no, this lady is the best devotee. You go to the lady, no, my daughter's the best devotee. You go to the daughter, my grandmother's the best devotee. That's, that's, what, that's what it means to be a Boishnava. Boishnava. Uh, that was the Bengali way of saying Vaishnava. Vaishnava becomes in Bengal. So, no, so these are the things we're supposed to note when we're studying scripture, like how are the devotees thinking? Hint, hint, hint. I should think like that. Not like, oh, wow, that's amazing. I could never be that way. Then why are you reading the book? What, what's it for? You know, do something useful. If that's the way you're going to take it, I could never be like that. It's supposed to inspire you, not depress you. I read the story of Pallad Maharaj. It was amazing. I'm convinced I'll never be like him. That your conclusion after reading Bhagavatam? You know, I threw away my beads today after reading this chapter on Pallad Maharaj. Why? Because I realized I couldn't be like him. Hare Krishna. No. Please don't do that. Okay. All right. Okay, let's continue reading. Any pure devotee who is constantly conscious of Krishna is naturally very fortunate. The word niloke, meaning within the material world, indicates that before the Pandavas there had been many, many devotees, such as the descendants of the Yadu dynasty and Vashishta, Marichi, Kasyapa, and Lord Brahma, and Lord Shiva, who were all extremely fortunate. The Pandavas, however, were better than all of them because Krishna himself 
live with them constantly. Narada Muni, therefore, specifically mentioned that within this material world, Miloka, the Pandavas were the most fortunate. The most fortunate, but not feeling the most fortunate. However, my dear devotees, the holy name lives with you. As long as, as many hours as you chant it, the holy name lives with you. Therefore, my dear devotees, you are the most fortunate as long as you chant properly. And if you chant improperly, not as fortunate. Some fortune, not as fortunate. And if you commit aparad, then very unfortunate. Because you'll have to come back. If you don't give up aparad, you'll have to come back, take another body to learn how to give up aparad. It seems kind of a waste, don't you think? If you can do it in this body, why take another one? And what in your next life you get a body you don't like? You, you know that you know that country where all, you hate all those people. You think they're crazy. Oh, well, they'll take birth in that country and be one of them. And you'll have to try to become Krishna conscious from that platform. Why? Why take a detour? Just you know, go straight back to Godhead. You don't have to be careful about not liking people because you could end up one of them. Uh, yeah, that's why Nadia took birth in Siberia. Um, you ever have a dream that's like really crazy and weird and like just uh, can't figure out where that's all coming from? Well, I won't figure it out for you. It's all in there. And it got in there it was by something you ate, something you heard, something you saw, something you did, but it got in there, right? So may, be careful about what gets in there because what goes in comes out, garbage in, garbage out. So, you know, you hate somebody, some race, some religion, some this and that, be careful. That goes in and that gets processed and then it comes out. It's interesting, right? Everything, you know, you are what you eat. But according to Ayurveda, Veda, you eat through your eyes and your ears and your nose and your sense of touch also. And so all of that affects consciousness. I had a big realization yesterday. You want to hear it? It's quite interesting. I was reading this book uh, for this seminar I was doing this weekend. I was reading this book called Ayurveda and Psychology. So he, he in the book, he talks about onions and garlic. You know, he talks about all kinds of food and how food affects consciousness. And he talks about onions and garlic. And of course, it's rajasic and tam has a rajasic and tamasic effect on the consciousness. It's not like if you eat garlic, you know, there's a, you know, it's like a big sin and there's a planet, you know, a hellish planet for garlic eaters. Garlic loca and all the people eat, you know, garlic go there and it smells really bad there. And you, you live there for 10,000 years and you have to keep your, if you open your nose, you'll vomit. And it's, it's not like that. It's not like a sinful activity. It's a tamasic activity or it has a, it's, not even a tamasic activity per se. It's a tamasic food. Rajasic, or maybe it's rajasic and onions are tamasic or vice versa. Or maybe they're a little of both. It's that food. So it carries those modes of, that carries that nature. So if you eat it, then it affects your consciousness that way. Now, all you Indians, tighten your seatbelts, kind of, because I'm going to say something you're not going to like. And you'll probably never listen to another class I ever will ever give. And here it comes. If we stay away from onions and garlic because they're rajasic or tamasic, how come in India the food is so spicy? Because it's clearly stated in the Gita, it is spicy food is rajasic. Now, why would you eat rajasic food for the same? You wouldn't for the same reason you wouldn't eat tamasic food like onions and garlic. So, you know, I can't eat this. Oh, Prabhu, I can eat these chips. There's no onions and garlic, just chili like four tons of chili, no problem. As long as there's no onions and garlic, I eat all the chili I want. You know, and, and 4,000 grams of salt, sodium. No, that's also agitating, you know, right? Like, and 3,000 grams of sugar. No, uh, excess, ex, excess of those kinds of food, it affects consciousness. So I just thought it was funny after reading that, that we like, 
you can't eat onions and garlic, but all the all the chili you want, no problem. Just go for it. Chili, pepper, you know, just load it up. You know, Jinkya, when um, when I don't know if you remember, I, I don't know if I was portraying my external suffering. Maybe I was when we were in Delhi and I was eating at the restaurant. Was I complaining that it was too hot? And that was years ago. I don't know. Six, eight years ago, I think when we first met. I must have been complaining through every bite that it was too hot. Do you re- was I? Do you remember? Because because by you know okay here yes, Maharaj, uh, when when we were in uh, uh, in Govindas in Delhi 2011 I think yeah. that time uh, you were telling me that it's very spicy. Yeah, I had it like 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 I had to go like oh okay I can eat the white rice there's nothing in it. And I can eat the roti, you know, because it's just ghee. I hope it was ghee. Yeah. And I can eat the sweet. But everything else was like torture, right? Yeah. So I've learned a lesson, right? Not that I don't just distrust Indians, but when they tell you it's not spicy and you're not Indian, do not believe them. Because not spicy means you can barely eat it, and mild means you cannot eat it. And Spicy means you will be in the hospital if you eat it, if you're from the West. So I find it, I find it so funny, you know, maybe in our temples now, they've, they're a little wiser and they don't make it so spicy. I don't know. But when I was, when I was in Calcutta in the early, in the late eighties, I stayed in the temple for a week or two. It was spicy by my standards. Anyway, I just thought that was, I just would throw that out. I thought, found that to be quite interesting that, you know, if you're going to make a big deal about onions and garlic, make a big deal about chili because it's also disturbs the mind and sexually it's an ad, it's a stimulant as well. Yeah. How do you, just some food for thought or some spice for thought. Okay. Well, we have to see if there's any comments or questions now. I don't know if there is. Okay. So Nadia, I was an Indian in my last life and I wanted to become a sense gratifier. So I took birth in America. Okay, that's the quote of the day. Can you send that to Satyarupa and tell her to put it on Facebook or something? Or send it to Radhapriya. No matter how Krishna conscious you will become, you will always feel like rascal number one. Or if you want to turn it into a rap song before, then we can play the, get some beats for it. Okay, so I don't see anything else. So, uh, yeah, well, there is. Okay, there is a comment here. Satyarupa. Sounds so much like how you helped me when I came to Mark. You gave me your maha, not a sweet, but corella juice. And you arranged for a devotee's clothes for me. Corella juice, yeah. We're just testing you. If you can drink corella juice, you're qualified to live in my apartment. Um, oh yeah, I just didn't have any devotee clothes. Okay, so we can keep reading because there's no comments yet. So, hmm. so this is text number forty-nine. Savayum Brahma Mahad Bimringa Kaivalya Nirvana Sukana Vuti Priya Shuridva Kaloma Tuleya. Atmahani yo bhidhi krid gurushcha. Just, just getting ready in case I go to South India. I have to chant like that. Okay. Translation. The impersonal Brahman is Krishna himself because Krishna is the source of the impersonal Brahman. He is the, or, or, he is the origin of the transcendental bliss sought by great saintly persons. Yet he... The Supreme Person is your most dear friend and constant well-wisher and is intimately related to you as the son of your maternal uncle. 
Indeed, he is always like your body. They're cousins, Judas, dear Krishna. He's always like your body and soul. He is worshipable. Yet, he acts as your servant and sometimes as your spiritual master. So this is um, one of the endearing qualities of Krishna, that sometimes he acts as servant to his devotee. And it's, uh, it's kind of inconceivable in a sense. But Krishna relishes that position of servant much more than being in the master position. Which, which should be a good lesson for us, don't you think? Like, we're supposed to be servants. We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not only supposed to be servants. Being servant is one thing. But thinking like a servant is another thing. Because I can be a servant, but not think like one. Like, why do I have to do this? Why can't I be the boss? But I'm doing the service. So more important, what we're trying to do more importantly, I mean, acting as a servant is purifying us so we can think about, think, have the bob of servant. But um, the bob of servant means no longer the enjoyer. I'm not looking to enjoy for myself. That's what it means to be a servant. So one may think, Yes, I'm a servant of Krishna, you might say that, but actually to be a servant of Krishna means this bob that I'm enjoyer, I can enjoy this world. It's totally gone from your consciousness. You never think about your enjoyment anymore. You only think how this, how Krishna can enjoy this. There's no independent thinking. That's what it means to be a servant. In case you were just thinking you are a servant by constitution, yes, you are doing devotional service, but by mentality, it may not be complete. That's the complete mentality. Everything that I contact, I think how that can be used in Krishna's service, including my own body, or mainly my own body, primarily my own body. And I have, a devotee will think, I have no right. How dare I even think about enjoying something? It's Krishna's. Don't dare. One time I heard Prabhupada say to me, this was just an inspiration. Don't you dare. You think about joining this, don't you dare. You know, it's like you invite me over to your house and then they get a call and say, and you say, I'm going to be 10 minutes late. Just go in the house and wait for me. So I go in the house and I'm like all alone and I'm looking, looking at all these things you have and you're rich and I'm poor. And I'm like, whoa. He won't miss it. He can just buy another one. I'm going to steal that. And then your conscience speaks. Don't you dare. This is not yours. This is his house. This is your friend. You can't steal that. Oh, but he's rich. He won't care. No, you, you can't do that. You don't. That's just, you don't do that. Just don't think about it. So that's how we should think about everything in this world. Don't you dare. This is Krishna's. Don't you dare think like this. It's not yours. Don't touch it. Even this body is not yours. What about my body? It's my body. Do with my body what I want. No, sorry. It's not your body. You know that whole movement for abortion? It's my body. I do what I want. No, it's not. Sorry to tell you, ladies. It's not your body. Where did you get the body? Did you make it? Did you work hard and buy it? Like, where did you get it? Did you create the elements in your body? And even if you don't believe in God, it was your, it's your mother's body. She gave it to you, it's not yours, she owns it. Or the earth owns it. And someday the animals may own it if you aren't buried properly or cremated. So that, that when you have that mentality, then you can say, I'm a servant. Then. Then, then you're a servant when you you can actually say that. But if you're going to say you're a servant, that's what it means. I don't look at anything with the eye to enjoy it, only with the eye to serve. There was a song when I was young. I mean, I think there was a song maybe before I was born. 
I don't know, I don't know all the words. Maybe somebody could find out. But the 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 main line that kept repeating is, but I only have eyes for you. Can you find that, Tanya? That song? I think the lyrics might be good. But I only have eyes for you. Something like that. I mean, this is like it's probably like 1955 or something. Okay, there it is. Can you get the words for us, Tanya? I don't want to hear the song because it'll, I don't need that melody in my head, although it just entered. But I don't remember it, so I don't want to refresh it. The words, my love must be a kind of blind love. I can't see anyone but you. Shabab, 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 shabab. Okay. That's it. Wait a minute. Yeah, if it's Shabbat Shabbat, that's the 50s. Maybe millions of people go by, but they all disappear from view, and I only have eyes for you. That's it. There you go. Just replace you with Krishna and, and Shabbat Shabbat with Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Okay, well, Krishna is it. My love must be a kind of blind love I can I can't see anyone but Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Are the stars out tonight? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I don't know if it's cloudy or bright. Hare Krishna. I only have eyes for you, dear Lord. The moon may be high, but I can't see a thing in the sky. I only have eyes for you. I don't know if we're in a garden. Sounds like Lord Chaitanya in ecstasy or in a crowded avenue. You know when Lord Chaitanya fell in the ocean? Like, you are here and so am I. Maybe millions of people go by, but they disappear from view. And I only have eyes for you. Perfect. You can sing that to Krishna every night before you go to sleep. Your bedtime. What do you call it when you sing a song at night and put someone to sleep? Is there a name for it? I forgot. Bedtime. So what? What do you call it? I know bedtime. Lullaby. Yeah, lullaby. That will be your lullaby every night. Um, and which is this, this song is confirmed in Shastra. I think it's Chaitanya Charitamrita where Krishna's cover says, you know, ordinary people see, they differentiate. This is wood, this is stone. This is this man, woman, everything. But Pira only, only sees Krishna. I only have eyes for you. That, that's the verse right there. Premanjana charita bhakti vilochane na Shantasadaiva Ridaye Shubiloka Yanti Yang Shama Shandaramachinta Guna Shurupam Govindamari Prusham Tamaham Bajami. I only see you. Everywhere I see you, in every atom, in between every atom, in every heart, I only see you. Hare Krishna. Okay, are there any comments or questions? Lullaby, lullaby. Okay. Um. Mm. There is always a, this is the purport, always a difference of opinion about the absolute truth. One class of transcendentalists concludes that the absolute truth is impersonal, and another class concludes the absolute truth is a person. In Bhagavad Gita, the absolute truth is accepted as the supreme person. Indeed, that supreme person himself, Lord Krishna, instructs in Bhagavad Gita, Brahmanahi Pratishtaham, 1427, Mata Paratanam Nanyat, 77. Quote, the impersonal Brahman is my partial manifestation, and there is no truth superior to me. That same Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, had acted as the supreme friend and relative of the Pandavas. And sometimes he even acted as their servant by carrying a letter from the Pandavas to Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana. Because Krishna was the well-wisher of the Pandavas, he also acted as guru by becoming the spiritual master of Arjuna. Arjuna accepted Krishna as his spiritual master. Sushyateham sharimam tam bapanam. Upanam. And Krishna sometimes chastised him. For example, the Lord said, Asot Chan Amasot Chastam Pagyavadam Shabashase. 
While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. The Lord also said, Kutastva kashmilam vidam, vishame samopashtitam, my dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon you? Such was the intimate relation between the Pandavas and Krishna in the same way. A pure devotee of the Lord is always with Krishna through thick and thin. His way of life is Krishna. This is the statement of the authority of Sri Narada Muni. You know, one time Prabhupada was asked, uh, Prabhupada was asked, was part where someone asked or challenged or said, what if Krishna isn't God? And I'll, I will speak it in colloquial slang. Whatever, we don't care. We just love him anyway. It's more or less what Prabhupada said. But even if he isn't, we love him anyway. You know, in other words, like, did the gopis care if Krishna is God or not? No, I don't think so. They don't even know what to speak of care. So that was Prabhupada's point. No, it doesn't, you know, Krishna is not God. All right, whatever. It doesn't matter. We love him. But what if you go to hell? Well, if I love Krishna, I'll go where he is. And if he's in hell, that's heaven. And if I go to heaven and you're there, you know, you're talking to this fanatical Krishna, well, that would be hell for me. So it's kind of a sarcastic statement. But sometimes they deserve such statements. They, they earn them by their behavior. But generally, we, of course, we wouldn't say that. But uh, Radha Swami once said that. It was really funny. The reason he said it was because a Christian was arguing with him and there was a big crowd. And, you know, so the crowd's listening. So sometimes you have to be clever. So that's what he said. He said, well, if I go to heaven and you're there, I don't want to go because you're like, you're really bothering me. Yeah. And the crowd appreciated that. Work in the crowd, you know, sometimes you have to work the crowd. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Um, so, um, the Prabhupada's talking about this intimate relationship Arjuna had. And, and part of the intimacy was being chastised. Krishna was chastising Arjuna, but actually he was chastising us because we, Arjuna, took the mentality that we have. So whenever Arjuna is chastised, you should think, okay, so how am I thinking like Arjuna right now? Do I have the same mentality? And sometimes, uh, you know, taking, taking a good chastisement is healthy, you know. We need some regular chastising. And by reading Bhagavad Gita, don't just think Krishna's chastising Arjuna. We should think he's chastising us as well. You know, when your mind is telling you something really ridiculous, then you can hear these words of Krishna. How have these impurities fallen upon you? They are not befitting a man or a woman who knows the higher values. So, you know, you can think to yourself, how am I thinking like this? This is not befitting a devotee of Krishna. I would call that an affirmation, but it's negative. So we can't call it, we call that a naf, it's an affirmation, a negative. That's just a word I made up, yeah. But sometimes I can't think of an affirmation for an affirmation. You are, you are a devotee. You are a devotee. You think purely, pure thoughts, pure. I'm a devotee, pure thoughts, pure actions. No impurities. No, that's a negative. Pure, I am pure. You can say I'm pure and be humble because that is your natural state, purity. So in, in my real state, I am pure. Did you ever hear my affirm my affirmations? Did I ever read them to you? My um, not the body affirmations. Would you like to hear them? The only way you're going to be able to hear them is if I can find them. I don't know what I called them. Yeah, here it is. I call them spiritual self-love affirmations. Did we go through these ever before? Does anyone remember? 
I'm going to put them in the chat and we can recite them together. I am spirit consciousness. I am light. I am eternal. I am blissful. I am fully aware. I possess divine qualities. I am love. Uh, that's another sentence. I am love and compassion. Another sentence. I am amazing. I already made a recording with these affirmations. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, I am amazing. Oh, you have them. Bhakti affirmations. These are new ones, I think. I just, I just redid them and I made a CD. It's on my other, I made a recording. It's on my other computers. I can't play it for you. It's really nice. And I did, um, these are affirmations. I did a guided meditation also. It's nice. You know what's nice about this is that this, I could give a lecture and say, I am spirit, I am consciousness, I am light, I am eternal, I am blissful, I am fully aware, I possess all divine qualities, I am love and compassion, and I am amazing. It's just our philosophy. But when you separate each one, then you recite it yourself as a separate thought, it gets in there more deeply. I am, you know, you are light, doesn't Krishna say that? The soul and light is like brighter than a thousand suns. Eternal, blissful, fully aware, shit. Possessed, you possess divine qualities. That's good news. Uh, yeah, so this is the updated one. Yeah, this, this is, yeah, these are like self. Um, yeah. These, these other ones are bhakti affirmations, so they kind of merge because I needed self for the self esteem course, I needed these. So I came up with a, a kind of a condensed. Maybe this one's better. I have a spiritual form. Yeah, it wasn't. This was for non. The last one I read is for non devotees. Mm -hmm. I have a spiritual form. That's a beautiful meditation. I have a spiritual form. You have. It's waiting for you. Why you? What are you wasting time down here? Your spiritual form is away, awaiting you in the spiritual world. Why don't you go get it? Your treasure, your father has left you a treasure. Go get it. Why are you wasting time down here looking for pebbles? You have a treasure. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>